Hey, what is up trainers? Pogo Joel here coming at you with a PvP tips and tricks guide. This was a highly requested video by my community, so I will definitely start covering PvP and the monthly cups that do come out. So whether you're a Pokemon Master, Silph Row Champion, or you're just starting out with PvP, I've got some tips that will help you be the best like no one ever was. And if you do find this content helpful, please drop a like, subscribe, we're on the road to 100 and hopefully beyond. So let's get into it, trainers. First things first, team composition. Selecting your Pokemon for PvP is going to be a big part of your game, your strategy, and how you play PvP. We can go over some ways to select here. One way you can approach PvP is by having coverage teams, looking for Pokemon that are going to cover various different metas. So for example, we have Gyarados here. Gyarados, this Gyarados I have Bite and Crunch on it, but I also unlocked the secondary move, which was Outrage, to get more coverage for Dragon type Pokemon. And you can find various other Pokemon here, like Donphan, we have Counter, Earthquake, and Play Rough. Great mix, great spread, great coverage. Uh, other Pokemon are Charizard with uh, Dragon Claw, if you unlock that, that'd be perfect. This one has the Community Day move Blast Burn. Uh, let's see, what are some of the other options here you could pon possibly use here? Oh yeah, we have Rosalia. That one learns Grass Knot and Dazzling Gleam. Great coverage as well, both Fairy and Grass. So good for ba uh, raid battles, good for PvP. Uh, we do have a few more options here. Uh, I'm just showing you a few of them, but there are many examples like this. One of my favorite ones is going to be Typhlosion. Uh, not this Typhlosion, I have one here. Uh, in the Great League that you'll see, uh, no, sorry, in the Ultra League, it does it. It does put in work uh, for Alligator as well. You can get another move, but Typhlosion here, Shadow Claw, Blast Burn, and Solar Beam. The Solar Beam is going to cover Water types that try to beat it. Uh, you'll have coverage for them too. You could even do Gardevoir with uh, Dazzling Gleam and Shadow Ball, and just get more coverage type moves. You can do it with something like a Weavile, you can add the Ice Attack moves and also Dark moves as well. Uh, Swampert here, uh, Earthquake's going to give it a good coverage as well. The Toga Togekiss could be a very good one because you don't know what hidden power that person could have when they bring it in. And it's just finding Pokemon like this that have a lot of wide range of coverage are going to be very useful for making your teams. They're going to be very useful for taking on different type of Pokemon. So a coverage team is one way you can approach PvP. Balance teams. So another great strategy is creating a balanced team. One that's going to cover all of your weaknesses. So here's a good example. We have Charizard, Venusaur, and Blastoise. Let's say you have Charizard first in your lineup. And you go up against a rock Pokemon. Uh, Charizard's going to be weak to it because it's fire. You can bring in grass and you can even bring in water. So you have Venusaur and Blastoise there to cover you. Let's say you went in with Venusaur and then uh, maybe you went up against a Typhlosion or another Charizard. Well, you have your own Charizard to mirror match it or you have your Blastoise which is going to be super effective towards it. And same thing, this is a good example of how you can cover your butt with all of the different type of Pokemon that you have on your team. So just look at your team, see what you're weak against and try to have something that covers it if you want to create a balanced team. Well, have you ever heard of the phrase defense wins championships? Well here are the top gym defenders in Pokemon Go. Uh, here is a graph courtesy of GamePress. If you see this um, we can find some really bulky options to help compose your team. Uh, some examples that they have here are Blissey, Chansey, those might not be the best PvP options. Um, maybe they'll get better moves later on, but I know they got held back because of the most recent move changes and stat rebalances the last time around. Snorlax is finally getting some love. He's going to be a great option. Body Slam has a legacy move set, and then it also learned um, Outrage now, which is going to be great. Milotic. Uh, other notable options are Dragonite. Steelix, which has showed up in multiple uh, Silph Road Cups already. Donphan, Lapras, who's been showing up on multiple Silph Cups already. Lantern, multiple Silph Cups already. Uh, Gardevoir, Clefable, which has shown up at least in one cup where it was viable. 
uh, Metagross, which is coming up in a few cups here, definitely keep an eye on him. Venusaur and Exeggutor, plenty of bulky options to help create your team. And here's an example of a defensive team that I made just for fun. Put Blastoise in there, it's a community day Blastoise, so it's going to have an awesome move set, and it already has um, pretty diverse moves itself. I put in a Whale Lord for fun, and it's a shiny one, so shiny flex there, um, but also a great gym defender and great all around defensive stats. And then Snorlax, the king of defense, he will have body slam this one, and then if you so desire, you can unlock his secondary move, maybe Outrage, that new move he has. But this is an example of a defensive team that can help take you far. Maybe not the best composition since I have two water types, but you can come up with your own defensive teams. Moves in Pokemon Go are going to be huge. What you take in a battle is going to help determine the outcome. You can have the same Pokemon going up against each other, but whoever has the better moves might come out on top, and whoever uses their shields might come out on top, but right now we're going to focus on just moves. So up here we do have a list from the Silph Road of some of the best moves they consider as the best charge moves, as the best quick moves for PvP, or just overall in general moves. Um, we're not going to pay too much attention to this list because we're going to simplify this and make it easy for everyone to understand. Alrighty guys, charge moves and charge bars. So I'm going to leave a link in the description for GamePress. It's my favorite resource when I'm checking these. But um, let's get you familiar with some of these terms. DPS is damage per second. EPS is energy gain per second. And then we also have a true DPS, so how much damage you're actually doing per second. Uh, what you need to know is the damage per second DPS is going to be how much damage that move actually does. The EPS is how much energy it's gaining. And then um, what I like to pay attention to for charge moves is moves that are a little bit faster. So for example, three bar charge moves are going to be a lot quicker for Pokemon. So right here we have Charizard. We know Dragon Claw is going to be very fast hitting. And then Blast Burn is going to be also devastating as well. And also on Gamer Press, you can go to view the uh, le legacy move sets. So these are moves that they no longer have, or maybe we're out at a limited time, like Blast Burn. Um, very useful, very helpful resource. I will leave that link again in the description. And hopefully, this uh, kind of gives you an idea visually uh, what moves might work in PvP. One strategy is spamming or shield baiting. So with these three bar charge moves, the way they translate over is they turn into two bar charge moves with a little bit more attack in PvP. You can see that on the bottom of any Pokemon. You go to their move set and then go over to trainer battles and it'll tell you what their PvP moves translate over to. So their moves are going to be different from actual like raiding and gym battling for PvP. So here are some examples of three bar charge moves that you can use that are going to be very spammy and are going to get your opponent to use their shields early on which might open the door for you with shield advantage and using Pokemon with stronger charge bars to attack your opponent without them having any shields at all. So here I'm just going to show you some quick examples. I'm going to go ahead and go up against Spark. If you haven't battled a trainer yet, well, your, your team leader, uh, bottom right, uh, the same one you look for raids and uh, nearby Pokemon you can go over to the side and find a gym leader or sorry a team leader that you want to battle so here you're gonna see um, might not be the best test for Celio since he is weak but I do consider Spark as one of the tougher great league um, leaders down here but you can see how fast Celio is just pulling this off pulling this off I did go ahead and switch to probably the new king of spam uh, Medichan or any Pokemon with power up punch Guys, please remember to charge up your charge move. What am I talking about? When you're using your charge move, so right now we're building energy, building energy. I just clicked on the charge move. This is what happens if you don't charge it. No damage is done. Now, here we are going to do only one bar. Damage is done. And then uh, we'll go ahead and defeat this and get it ready for the next one. So this blinking circle here is our charge move. It's ready to go. The more you tap it, the higher the attack is going to be. So that was two bars. Now the highest you can get should be three bars. It sometimes looks like it could be four, a fourth one there, but keep tapping all the way, tap crazy, and then you'll do way more damage that way. 
we did right here show you what happens when you do not tap when you tap to one bar when you tap the two bars and when you tap to three bars you'll do more damage if you keep tapping away once that charge move is ready to go buying secondary charge moves in pokemon go can be super useful when it comes to raiding and pvp costs for a secondary move are based off of walking distance with your buddy one kilometer buddy distance for starters babies and other one kilometer buddies is only going to cost you 10,000 Stardust. So here we see all of these starter Pokemon will always cost 10,000 and it's going to be very advantageous to you to actually get these guys on your team with secondary moves. Some of them pack a punch and do really great on your teams and also provide a little bit of variety. For three kilometer buddy distance it's going to cost you 50,000 Stardust and 50 candy. For 5 km buddy distance, it's going to cost you 75,000 Stardust, 75 Candies. And for 20 km buddy distance, those are legendary and mythical Pokemon, it's going to cost you 100,000 Stardust. Now, I have invested in one so far, but there's definitely some that you would definitely be interested in that might be able to help you in, in the future. But they do come at a heavy toll. So it's important on you to make wise decisions when it comes to using all of your resources, your Stardust, your Candy. Uh, I know you really have to grind to get these um, rare Candy as well. So think about it before you do decide to power up a Pokemon. Be careful, learn from my mistakes. Don't just go for a quick evolve when you're really happy you just hatched a Pokemon. That happened to my Rylu. Uh, got it, really wanted to evolve it, so I evolved it thinking oh, I'll just get a new move later on it's only 25 candy I have enough right now to evolve it so I'll evolve it nope because when I saw it become Lucario that 10,000 it would have cost me then is now 75,000 and this is something you're gonna want to pay attention to shielding in PvP is pretty big you get two shields per match so you really want to make sure you're using them wisely let's see here they block they're trying to keep their Pokemon alive that could be good because boom they get that charge move off I use mine because I really want to protect my Pokemon and keep it going since it did do a lot of damage so I'm gonna use a charge move here she decides to shield which is good because that would have been super effective whenever a shield is red that means it's super effective I use a shield here it was not done wisely because I wouldn't have made it to my next move which is dangerous because look what's gonna happen next I'm dead. If I would have saved that shield, I would have been able to protect my Toxicroak, but I was not able to. Um, I would have used my shield for Toxicroak, he would have still been alive, this match would have gone a lot more faster and smoother, but hey, we live and we learn, so learn your shields, and it's going to just take a lot of practice to learn what your Pokemon can and can't take. In summary, when you want a shield is when you have Glass Cannon type Pokemon, Pokemon that are really weak that are going to go down no matter what, like Breloom. Um, when you're trying to save a good Pokemon, let's say I know they have a Toxic Croak, I'm trying to keep my Venomoth alive. When you're getting off a charge move, say I built up the energy and I really want to use that move so I didn't waste the energy, you, you can block and then shoot off that, sh that energy built up. So definitely use your shields wisely, you only get two. Here's one master tip for you, if you can get your opponent to use their shields early, like the spamming technique I showed you earlier, you can actually set yourself up for success. So let's see this example here. I'm using a Typhlosion with two moves. Um, Blast Burn, getting this person to use up their shields early. And then uh, I'm going to shield mine because I know mine's going to be very good. And now he has no shields left. So he set us up perfectly, makes a switch. Here comes Solar Beam. Goodbye Groudon. Now we're waiting. Here comes Lugia. Alright, well, let's hit it hard. Uh, he has no more shields left, so I'm going to go Solar Beam again. So now that's two hard-hitting moves, almost depleting entirely his first two Pokemon, and doing damage to the original Pokemon that was out there. So all three have been damaged by Typhlosion. And here we go, finish him off with a Leaf Blade from uh, Sceptile here. So having people use their shields is big here in Pokemon Go. Switching and type advantage is huge in Pokemon Go. Here she comes out with Tyranitar, super super weak against fighting. She brings in Mewtwo, really good for her. She blocks my attack. Machamp is going to be weak to Mewtwo, so fighting is weak to Psychic. So I bring in my Dark, which is going to be good against Mewtwo. Luckily, I did a shield because she had Focus Blast on her Mewtwo. 
fighting is going to be super effective to dark. So what I want you to pay attention to is here, look at the bottom right, you can see where my switch button was. There's a cooldown counter on it, it's going to count down 60 seconds. So make sure you do switch wisely. Switching can trap you or help you get a good advantage. So make sure you do pay attention to your switch and cooldown time. And then I'm going to make my switch here. And I switch into Gyarados. This Gyarados has outrange. It's not powered up that far. So it might not be able to get this move off here. But we'll see. No shields left. Goodbye Gyarados. Had I had at least one shield I could have used my outrage which would have been super effective. Alrighty, for competitive players, if you are looking to join those uh, Sylph Cups and all these other tournaments that are happening in your area locally, my best tips are learn the, the type advantages if your tournament has certain types that they can use. Learn what types you have, which Pokemon you have as well. If you have one move, is it going to be good against several types? If you have a second move, what types is that going to cover? So just learn that. You don't have to be a super nerd and go out and learn everything. But just prepare for those cups, and I'll be helping you guys prepare for those as well. I'll start posting uh, PvP coverage on all of the Sylph Arena cups that do come out. So if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments section, and I'll be more than happy to help out. If you need help making a team, please do use my comment sections for that. And if any of this content is helpful, please like and subscribe. Thanks guys, and I'll be bringing you more Pokemon Go content very soon.